Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to take a look at PyScript, which is a new library that allows you to write Python in the same way that you would write JavaScript in HTML. So if you wanna add Python directly into an HTML file, you can with PyScript, or if you wanna create a separate script file and write Python in there and it manipulates parts of the DOM, for example, you can do that. So anything you can use JavaScript for, you could potentially use PyScript for. So here they have some examples. I'll take a look at the simple ones because it is slow right now. So this library is a bit experimental. So the performance isn't quite there yet, but I'm sure that's going to come with time. A lot of features haven't been implemented yet, so I don't think it's ready for actual use in production projects, but it is something interesting to take a look at. So this thing just gets the current time and all oh, this is Python, uh, all these other examples. You can run a REPL, um, like this one here, and you can evaluate something like two plus two, hit enter, or actually shift enter, you get four, for example. And they have some other examples. So once you download PyScript, you'll be able to run this and see all the example apps that they built. They built a to-do app. I'm gonna build my own to-do app since I had some template laying around somewhere. So that's what I'm gonna demonstrate in this video. But I think you should check it out. It's pretty easy to install. And as you'll see, when I go to create my to-do app, it's pretty easy to get started with. So let's take a look at how to build this to-do app. So here is the example app that I'm going to build. It's a to-do list, and this is what it looks like. And this is the HTML. So it's just HTML and some styles that go along with it. There's no JavaScript in here or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically write Python in a similar way to writing JavaScript. So before I can do this, I need to bring in the PyScript.js. So this will be the only JavaScript in this, but I won't use it directly. So I'll just add it to the top of the file and this just loads PyScript from the site. And then everything after this is going to be Python. So normally when you write JavaScript and when you want to include another file, one thing you can do is you can go down to the body and then you can add like the script tags and then the source of the script will be the name of the JavaScript file that you want to run on this particular page. Well, for PyScript is very similar. So instead of using script for JavaScript, I'm going to use py-script and then the source will be some file. So I'm going to name this todo.py and this will be the script that executes for this particular page. And I just close out the PyScript tag here. So now I can go ahead and create this todo.py, and then I can start writing code to interact with the page. So the first thing I can do is I can select the elements that I need. So let me go over here. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to add to-do items. So I need to know what the text is in this input here. And then I also need to know when the user clicks on this add button. That way I can create the new to-do item. So to do that, the first thing I need to do is I need to select those. So if I look at the source for the text box and the add button, Let's see, we have, we have a form and then we have this ID to do text for the text input. And then we have this add button for the add button. So let me go ahead and select those. And the way you do that is you use element. So this element is automatically included from PyScript. You don't have to import it or anything, but element and then the ID. So I want to do text. And then I also want that add button. So add button. And then I'll just assign these two variables. So I'll call this to do underscore text. And then for this add button, right? So this pattern should be familiar to you if you've used JavaScript. You can use something like document .get element by ID and then pass in the ID. This is kind of the equivalent of that. Another thing I can select is the group here, this uh, list group, so I can eventually add another to-do item in. So let me go ahead and get that while I'm up there. So it's going to be added here to this to-do list group. So let me just copy that and bring that over. So we'll call this to-do list group, and this will be elements and then to-do list group. So these are the three things that I'll be working with right now. And the first thing I wanna do is, is I want to add a to-do. So I'm going to create a function called add to-do. And it's going to get past some information that I won't use. So I'll just have args there. And I'll put pass for now. And basically what I want to happen is every time that add button is clicked, so this add button that I have here, I want this add to do to be called. And the way I can do that is I could just take this add button 
And then I can say dot element and then on click equals add to do. So this should be pretty clear. We're taking the add button and then the element associated with that. So this add button is really more like, um, like an object inside of PyScript. And then every element object has the actual element on it. So you have the element object here and then the actual element. And then we're having on click on that element to call add to do. And this is very similar to JavaScript. Um, the pattern is exactly the same. It's just Python here. So every time the button is clicked, uh, this add to do will run. So one thing I can do is I can say from JS import console. And this is one thing that I find weird. Like you would think that to print to the console, you can just use prints in Python, but it doesn't work that way. Instead, you can import console from JS and then do console.log. And then I can say something like add button clicked. So now when I go and run this and I'll open up my developer tools. So one thing about PyScript is it takes a minute to initialize. So once it's ready, I can click on the button. And then we see down here, it says add button click. So we know that this event handler is working because when I click on the add button, I see this message in the console. So now let me write the code for this add to do. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get the text of the input. So this to do text. So to do that, I can say uh, text equals to do text. So to do text is the element object basically. And then I can get the actual element on that element object in a sense, and then I can do value. So once again, very similar to JavaScript. And then what I can do is I can create a new element. So I'll call this to do underscore item and I'll use the create function. So this is automatically included as well. I don't have to import it from anywhere. So I want to create a list item and I want to give it a class. So I can pass a list of classes here. Well, not really a list, but classes separated by spaces. And the class is going to be list group item. So that creates a new list item called to do item. And then I want to set the inner text of that to be the text of the input. So to do item, and then the element dot inner text is going to be text. So this is the text from the input. And then I want to basically take this to do item and I want to append it to the to do list group. So I don't want to append the actual to do item. I want to append the element of the to do item, which is a little weird. That takes a little getting used to. So to do list group, which is what I have for the select element here. And I want to say element, and then I can use the regular Dom access of a pin child and then to do item dot element, right? So once I do that, then it should append this new list item to this list group. And then another thing I can do is I can clear out the to do text. So I can just type to do text clear. And now this part should work. So let's see if this works fine. So let me reload the page and just wait for PyScript to initialize. And then I'll try uh, make video, right? So I'll click add and we see make video appears here. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna be able to complete an item. So basically the way I do this is if you click on this, then it will mark it as complete. It will put the line through the text and then change the background color of the list element. So let me go back. And the way I can do that is I'm gonna have another on click. And since this to do is creating a list element, I want the click event to be on the list element. What I can do is I can say to do item. So this is the thing I just created dot element dot on click. And I want something to happen on click. So this is pretty simple. I just basically want to add a CSS class. So I don't need to create an entire function. I'll just create an anonymous function. So we'll say Lambda and it's going to get an event as an argument. I won't use this event, but it's going to receive it. And then what I want to do is I want to add the class of the to do completed here. So let me just copy this. And then, so we have Lambda event and then I'll take the to do item and then I'm getting the elements. And then I want to add to the class list. So I can say class list and then dot add. And then I wanna add the to do completed, right? So once they click on this, the to do item, it will add to do completed. So let me go ahead and try this. 
and I'll wait for it to start and then make video, add, okay, click. And then we see it changes. If I create another one, let's say release video, add it there. And then another one, um, you know, edit video, you can add. And then I click on edit video, edit video is more complete. I can click on a release video. Can't click on these because they're just hard coded in the HTML. So let me go ahead and remove those. So it starts off empty, but when the page reloads, this should work as we expect. So test, we see it there, click it and it's complete. Okay, so that's adding a to-do, which is pretty straightforward, but I did run into a problem when I try to delete. So let's take a look at that. So first what I'll do is I'll select the delete button. We'll do delete all. So this delete all button is delete dash all as an ID. So delete all button. We'll have elements and then delete all. So we're getting this and I can add a on click handler. So what I'll do is I'll create a function, uh, delete underscore all, let's say delete all to do's and then args, just to get the one that's passed. And then I can add the uh, on click. So delete all button dot elements dot on click equals delete all to do's. Okay, so this function will be called anytime the delete button is clicked. So the way I was thinking about doing this was a for loop. So basically I would loop over all of the items in the list group. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say for a to do item in a to do list group dot elements dot child nodes, right? So this should give me all of the individual list items. What I want to do is I just want to remove them. So to do item dot remove. And let's see what happens when I do that. So let's wait for it to restart. And we'll say first, second. And then when I click on delete all, it just deletes one. And then I click on it again and it deletes the other one. So it's a bit weird. And I've tested this with more values. So let's see, first, second, third, and fourth. So I've tested this several times and like it doesn't delete everything all at the same time. So let's see, delete all. We see it deletes two of them. It deletes the first and the third, but not the second and the fourth. If I click it again, it deletes one, and I click it a third time, it deletes another. So I have no idea what's happening here. And I've tried different approaches to make this work, and it basically does the same thing. So because this is alpha, it's understandable like why there are problems like this. And I'm pretty sure that things like this will be resolved in the future, but it's just a problem that I ran into. But overall, I can definitely see the appeal if you're a huge fan of Python. I'm not necessarily sure about the benefits of doing it this way, other than the fact that, you know, you get to write Python over JavaScript because uh, a language is more than its uh, syntax. It's like the library, the, the, the runtime environments, um, you know, the community, stuff like that. So it's not just the, the syntax and, you know, maybe the standard library, which I don't think would apply for most things in the browser. Um, but it is interesting. So I recommend trying it out. It's pretty easy to set up as you saw here. You just import this script and then you start writing Python and you can see what you can make happen in Python. And like I said, this is alpha. So there will be a lot of changes in the future and we'll see if things get better. I'm pretty sure the API is going to change because I think it's a little clunky in places, but you know, it's alpha. We'll see what happens in the future. So let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.